So a lot of folks ask me, is a slingshot um, suitable for hunting? Yes, a slingshot is capable of being a hunting weapon. There's a lot of things you want to keep in mind when, before you want to start hunting with a slingshot. So first off, hunting, that's something you need to take serious. Uh, you owe it to the game to harvest it very cleanly. Secondly, it may not be legal in your area, so make sure you know your local laws and regulations. Check in with your local Department of Natural Resources or uh, game agencies. Find out if slingshot is an acceptable means of take. So with that said, let's say, yeah, you can hunt in your area. And let's say it's legal to hunt squirrels and rabbits um, and say pheasants in your area. What do you use? Well, the slingshot really isn't that important. It's the bands and ammo. For example, this is my favorite slingshot. There's nothing special about it. It's just a tree fork. But the bands and the ammo that I use for hunting are set up to generate a certain level of energy. So a lot of folks have said that seven foot pounds delivered to the target is sufficient for small game. I would say that's the very, very bottom. Um, you want to look somewhere around 12 foot-pounds. Now we can get into all the scientific calculations. You can go look at a ballistics table yourself. So what you want to look for is ammo that generates um, 200 feet per second and at least about 125 grains. That's going to get you at least that 10 foot-pound minimum, somewhere around in there. So how do you know? Well, one, you need to chronograph your ammo. So at your given draw length, uh, you may be shooting heavy enough ammo, but it may not be moving fast enough. So find that right combination of ammo. A lot of folks say that uh, heavier ammo is better than fast ammo, or fast ammo is better than heavier ammo. Slingshots kill by blunt force trauma, not necessarily penetration. On feathered game you may get some penetration, but that is not the primary way slingshots kill. It's delivering the energy to the target. With that in mind, you want to shoot generally heavier ammo as fast as you can. Also, headshots are pretty much the only sure shot for small game. Squirrels, the smallest of the small game, are some of the toughest to kill, so you want to make sure you hit those guys hard. You can take them with body shots. And with that in mind, faster and heavier is always better. So what are some of the projectiles you might want to consider for hunting with a slingshot? Now, of course, uh, folks in uh, lesser developed countries may just use clay balls or stones. And the key with stones is to find ones that are roughly spherical and uh, have enough mass. However, for us folks here, uh, shooting modern slingshot equipment, we generally shoot spherical ammo, and they're usually steel or lead balls. And we generally want those to be 125 grains or more. So, what's the difference between steel and lead? Well, they have some different properties. I prefer lead, and I prefer it for a couple of reasons. A lot of times when you're hunting small game, you're shooting up into treetops. Steel really bounces a lot. It also tends to deflect off of its target whereas lead has a tendency to deform and kind of just mash around its target. So one, it's a little bit safer to shoot because you might have a ricochet. And two, it dumps its energy into the target over a smaller given surface area. So if these two pieces of project ammo weigh the same, they're about 125 grains a piece, the lead has a smaller surface area than the steel. Therefore, the forces, the energy, is going to be concentrated over a smaller area. So, once you decide what ammo you want to shoot, the real meat and potatoes of slingshot hunting is being able to put it on the target. So make sure you're comfortable with your bands, being able to generate enough speed for your given ammo, and make sure that you can hit that target 80% of the time at the distance that you intend to hunt. You owe that to the game. Which brings me to my next point, which is ultimately the most important point, and that is your ability to hit what you're looking at. All right, so let's use this example. Take a ping pong ball, it's roughly two inches in diameter, maybe a little less. That's about the size of a vitals on most of your small game. A lot of them are actually smaller. If you can't hit that ping pong ball at the distance the game's at, eight out of 10 times, you shouldn't shoot at the game. You, you owe that to the game. So let's say you can hit a ping pong ball eight out of 10 times at 10 meters, but you can't at 15. Therefore, 10 meters is your maximum distance. Now this is gonna make you a better hunter. That means you have to sneak up on your game. You have to be a little more stealthy. So don't take shots any farther than you can comfortably hit 80 to 85% of the time on a two inch diameter target. Ultimately, you want that to be even smaller. Um, ideally, you'd wanna be able to hit a postage stamp at the distance that you're intending to shoot game. Like I said, slingshots kill by blunt force trauma primarily. So get close, hit them hard and heavy, and aim for the, the, the head, the heart, whatever the target is, make sure you can place your ammo there consistently every time. If you can't, please, please, please don't hunt with a slingshot. Use your rifle, use your bow. 
uh, use what you can cleanly harvest the game with. You owe that to the animals and you owe that to the slingshot community. Yeah, slingshots are a great hunting tool. Just keep in mind a couple of those things and everybody will have a lot more fun in the field.